today at the Lambeth Conference, everything has just gone quiet. Bishops and spouses are spending time on retreat, time to pray, time to meet one another as the people of God, before God and with God. Here at Canterbury Cathedral, we have spent the day reflecting on the text of 1 Peter and Peter's wonderful words about what it means to be the people of God, cherished, dearly loved, people called to love one another. To lead the retreat, we have members of the St. Augustine Seminars, a number of scholars from all over the world, met together ahead of the conference to reflect on the text of 1 Peter and how we read it from all our different places of the world. Hello, my name is Jen Strawbridge and I am a professor of New Testament studies at the University of Oxford and had the privilege of convening the St. Augustine Seminar, uh, which helped to plan all the biblical materials that have contributed to and been the backbone of the Lambeth Conference. And I'm here with some of my amazing colleagues um, who are contributing to parts of um, the retreat today that the bishops are, uh, are participating in and praying their way through. Um, so my colleagues Paul and Paolo, Esther, and you all know Isabel, um, and we've produced a commentary that has helped to guide the bishops in their preparations as well as some of the Bible studies. And then each person here is offering a reflection at today's retreat on a different chapter of First Peter to help the bishops to begin to really get grounded into scripture as we begin the conference. Yet as church, our self-understanding as God's called people fashioned along with all humanity in God's likeness, demands that we not only identify the different characters in this broken world, but also hold each other accountable for repairing the bridge. So the question for us is how do we see ourselves as followers of a rejected Messiah who had to suffer to accomplish his purposes? How should we respond to suffering, to rejection, to persecution for the sake of the gospel? During our first day of retreat uh, for bishops here in the Mother Church of the Anglican Communion, Canterbury Cathedral, uh, we had a very interesting and challenging presentations and Bible study from Dr. Isabella and Dr. Paul. Um, and Eucharist was really moving um, for many of us, uh, just to hear each other's voices, uh, singing together, receiving communion together, was really the glue that bonds us uh, together. Uh, today we are doing retreat, seeing the, uh, the, the cathedral. We look around all the history of the saints and the archbishop uh, uh, for the Canterbury that we have seen today. So this is very interesting for us and it is my first time to see this. It's a chance for us, I guess, to have some time out in a very busy schedule. But the challenge is, for me, it's how do I love Jesus in a, a world which is so full of stuff to do? How can I be the person God's called me to be? And that's a challenge that I've been asking myself. How can I love Jesus more in this way? One of the things we're praying for is for peace around the world. So many opportunities, well, so many crises, national crises going on. Uh, we just wanted to kind of put God up to date with what was happening around our context. So we pray for peace around the world. Today, after a day of retreat, Conversations are still continuing. The letter of 1 Peter was written to a church that was dispersed, that often lived in difficult and hostile circumstances. And in many ways, this is the reality of the Anglican Communion in many places around the world. Places of conflict, places of injustice or inequality. Esther Mombo's talk this afternoon reminded us of the need for the church to be honest about the difficulties of the world and the difficulties of the church and to talk about them. The letter of Peter encourages us to do that through solidarity, through looking after one another and loving one another. 
And as we carry on with another retreat day tomorrow for spouses and for bishop, we carry on exploring how we can love one another, support one another to be God's church for God's world.